Okay, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I still see uh, there are some folks that are trying to join and uh, see our program for today. Again, my name is uh, Murdad Hariri. I'm a pharmacist. Um, I'm the host of uh, today's webinar. Today we have an exciting program. Uh, we'll have uh, Mike Shorey. He is uh, with Shortcat Medical and he's gonna be discussing the 503 A and B and how these type of programs are able to help your practice gain access to needed medications such as semaglutide that you can help your patients um, gain access to it. He's got a PowerPoint in here that uh, uh, pretty informative. Uh, keep in mind that at any time, if you have any question, you can always call us at 888-442-8348 and we'll be able to answer any questions you may have about any of the programs that we offer at RX Connection that can help your pharmacy or your practice. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, uh, for the sake of everybody's uh, time, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, how you doing, Mike? Thank you, Madon. Uh, thanks uh, for having me. Um, let me jump in quickly, and for the sake of time, I know everybody's busy, uh, just to say that Shawcat as a company has been uh, working in this industry now, besides being in the medical field for 20 years, uh, specifically in the work of, of semaglutide, tazepatide, and things that are happening in the market right now for weight loss. Uh, it's moving very fast. It's a rapid-growing industry, and uh, we're thankful that we're at the forefront of this, and what I'm going to bring to everybody today is, most importantly, uh, before anybody moves ahead in this industry, you've got to understand what you're doing uh, in terms of the law, and also, more importantly, that you're buying product that is of the highest grade possible, pharmaceutical grade product, because there are industries, organizations out there that are you know, selling product that I do not believe is at the level that it should be at. Uh, you're finding other ingredients in it. You're finding products that are from a salt form that gets brought in. FDA is dealing with that. So there's a real uh, mechanism and structure that has been, in, been put in place. And when you break it down to the absolute, you actually find that there's very few real players in the industry. So I'm just going to jump ahead and uh, talk quickly about a 503B and a 503A. It's not like I think you don't know this. I think you know it. But really, at the end of the day, if you go to 10,000 foot, uh, the bottom line is a 503A is not an FDA-regulated facility. And an FDA-regulated facility has to cover a whole lot of different stringent um, mechanisms to be able to have that right, uh, to be able to provide product in bulk. And more importantly, a 503B is, according to the FDA, the only organization that's allowed to provide bulk semaglutide or tazepatide. A 503A should only be scripting the product. Uh, so I say that because it's important. There's a lot of confusion in the marketplace where industries and organizations are getting involved. Uh, a lot of the rules are being bended, and that's why some of the state boards are stepping in now and saying, we're not happy with this, we're not happy with that. Uh, but clearly, when you look at the breakdown in front of you, it, to me, it is a night and day situation when it comes to the manufacturing or rather the compounding, let me say, which is a better word, um, of the actual semaglutide product. Uh, for me, the other thing about a 503B and a 503A is uh, there's only about 76 503As, maybe even less now, on the FDA registered list as recognized 503Bs. Uh, for the manufacturing and of products and also the compounding of the semaglutide products. So being in relationship with the right ones is important. And I'll show you a little later that there's actually only two out there that have NDC numbers. So it becomes a decision that most pharmacists, and we, we work with a lot of pharmacies right now. I mean, think, I think this last week, we probably moved close to 400 vials of product just for pharmacies in the week. So we have a very close relationship with how they're doing it, what, what they're doing. And it comes down to the fact that uh, why we are working closely with those is they want pharmaceutical grade product because it's important to them. It's not just about chasing off the price. And yes, you can find price out there, which is cheaper, but it's not apples for apples, in my opinion. So let me jump ahead. Yeah. So what is the product at hand? Uh, for those of you who don't know, really, there's two products, obviously, semaglutide and tazepatide. Are coming from two different organizations, and these products were in the marketplace 
for diabetes and through the process of using it for diabetes, they began to find out that there were obviously weight loss um, aspects to it, which led us to another situation, which is the law. And that law simply stated uh, very clearly that a drug may be prepared by a compounding facility if that drug is in shortage. And it just so happens that both tazepatide and semaglutide are on the drug shortage list since 2023. Let me just take a step back for a second and say that I'm not making these statements on the basis of they sound good. We have verified these statements with several law firms and we have gone to the, to the largest law firm in the United States with the FDA, DA in Washington, and they have actually checked out the lab, all the lab's paperwork. And from that basis, uh, we've been given a green light to move forward. So therefore, when you look at the drug shortage list, it basically states that a 503B compounder can now take a raw powder APR product. And that APR product, please let me also stipulate the extreme importance that it comes through an FDA wholesaler. And our product does come through our FDA wholesaler, um, wholesaler. It is compounded and that product is compounded for sale. A little footnote there that says important note, reselling is not permitted. And I'll explain that in a moment. Another important thing is this is the actual law broken down. It says one of the conditions, this is from the FDA uh, draft, one of the conditions that must be met to qualify for this exemption, which means exemption to actually compound the product, says there that this drug will not be sold or transferred by any other entity than that outstanding outsourcing facility that is compounding such a drug. So very clear that they're saying in the law that the 503B is the only entity that can actually sell and transfer this product uh, in the United States of America at present. But there's a little nuance to it, and it says wholesaling compounded drugs is prohibited, which it is. But it is not deemed wholesaling when an outsourcing facility distributes a drug it compounded, important here, even without obtaining um, a patient script specific to a hospital or health facility, health clinic or physician's office where it is used as office stock for dispensing. And now, since I'm talking to mostly pharmacists, Gerard, we know that the next thing is, is critical. Uh, pursuant to prescriptions or to a pharmacy, federal facility or licensed physician, which subsequently dispenses the drug pursuant to a prescription. So the law basically says that you are able to get a prescription from somebody who walks in with a prescription from a doctor and you can fill that script. Jumping to the compounder, and I said this is important, there's only really two in the United States that I believe are well worth looking at. So the one that we work with, we work with two. The reason I work with two is that both of these labs actually have NDC numbers. Obviously they do COAs uh, and they have obviously all the right credentials. They FDA facilities, meaning they FDA registered and inspected facilities. So what they bring forward is quality. And if you look at this, they actually, the one is particularly owned by actual pharmaceutical company. They were a pharmaceutical company that is actually doing a 503B. So it's about technology, it's about structure, it's about um, having that NDC number that becomes important. Every batch is quarantined and follows FDA guidelines, pharmaceutical grade, let me re say this is important, not from the salt form, no acetate, no B12. We don't mix things that way. Uh, that The only relevance behind this is if B12 is put in because people feel nauseous, we have a peptide that is highly recognized as the better thing to be on, as opposed to having the ingredient mixed into the actual, into the vial. Just want to talk about not from salt form. The FDA has made some statements that they found people bringing product in. The two issues are they bring product product in and it's a salt form semaglutide that is highly rejected. Some of the 503As out there are still working with this product. And, uh, you know, I'm finding that a lot of that product for some reasons ending up into med spas. Uh, why, I don't know, but that's where it goes. It's a lot cheaper, but it's not a good product. The other thing about this is that when we talk about no salt form is that when it comes in, going through the FDA wholesaler means it gets its COA, it's checked there for import uh, COA, and then when it gets to us, it goes through obviously the next process with a 503B, and then it gets a new COA for the manufacturing and makeup of that product. But it's a very clean pharmaceutical-grade product. The beyond use date is 180 days, so 
once you have it, 180 days, no problem with COA, NDC, and just about everything we do is shipping in 24 to 48 hours. I presently have about 100,000 vials in stock, which could be moved at any time. So who can buy from a 503B? Let's have a look at this. Let's go through the tr the, the actual vehicle that comes in from, in from outside into the USA, as I said, through the FDA wholesaler gets the 503B here at the bottom, they make a finished product and that gets moved over. 503A compounders and healthcare facilities, including pharmacies, can purchase from a 503B for dispensing to patients. In a nutshell, typically what happens is a 503B buys in bulk, makes in bulk and sell in bulk. Uh, the smallest we sell is 10, 10 vials per box. That's the MOQ. We can go up to bigger. We can have a 10, 10 milligram by 4 ml for people that want to actually do in-house in um, administration. And then we also have the valves, obviously, for somebody to take home and do self-administration. And But if you look at that, 503A hospitals, med spas, doctor's offices, and you, the pharmacies, so long as you have an NPI number, you're good. You can buy this product. And, you, and just so you know, you buy it directly from the actual lab. Uh, the, our part and process of this is marketing facilitation of what's happening, but all transactions, and it's another important thing for me to say to you, when you realize that somebody else is involved doing the transaction and actually carrying the funds and things like that, we have a small problem. Deals have to be done by law between the actual manufacturer and the buyer, which is yourself. There I have it again, product cannot be resold. Let's reiterate that once you have the product, you can script it, but you cannot resell it. Basic understanding of ordering for us here is quite simple, really. All can advertise that your pharmacy can fill semaglutide. It doesn't matter where the advertising comes from. It could be in-house. We can help you with that. It could be working with local doctors and spas and things like that to say, I have this product. You can send patients to me. But anyone asking you, their doctor or clinic to lose weight need only bring you the script and you'll be able to fill that script. Uh, we have in stock ready to dispense 5 mg by 2 ml vials. That's not a problem. We have the other bigger vials as well. So we can always talk about that at a later time. And uh, a single vial right now with RX connection is cost, costs $150. And the typical dispensing of all the pharmacies we're working with now, which is quite a lot, they're dispensing out of $300 to $400 uh, per, per, um, per vial. Type of program, I just want you to see clearly it's not up to the pharmacist to decide the regiment. The regiment comes in on a script and it'll be given to you as how this is going to be obviously administered and titrated to the actual patient at hand. They simply bring the script and you fill it and they pay the difference. Ordering options, there we go, we got a 10, we got a, these are the prices, and we'll get them to you obviously in more clarity, uh, but uh, we got a 10 vial box, it's 150, we got a 25, it's also 150 per, uh, per vial, and then we've got a 10 vial, and, and um, we have the, another one which is a 20 meg um, product. So 10, 5, 5, and 10, sorry, 10, 5, 5, and 20 is readily available at any time. From a marketing standpoint, obviously, Madon has, you know, the perfect marketing plan, but I'll tell you just to show you marketing materials. Uh, we'll see in a second, but please, marketing rules do apply. I've just got another letter from the attorneys to say there's certain things you can say, certain things you cannot say. This is not a Zempic. It's not a diabetic drug. It's not a generic equal. It's, it's not that at all. It's a semaglutide compounded product that gets used for weight loss, and it is moving very fast in the market. Um, do not use the word, obviously, for sale or for office use. It's not something we do, and we do not guarantee results. Clearly, we can't. It's not a clinical trial drug. More importantly, don't say semaglutide comes from the same factory as Novo Nordics. If you were to know if there was any, because there has been some lawsuits from Novo into, with people, almost 90% of those lawsuits has to do with false claims of marketing. It has nothing to do with product. Um, product was fine. People were saying all the wrong things. From There's marketing available. We can always send that to you. As you can see, we have raw API that we can sell as well. So if you want to actually uh, compound yourself, we can provide it. I don't believe we're, people can beat our price at this moment. We have obviously network, um, pharmacy um, flyers. 
We have individual flyers. All of this can be made up. And naturally, you can also get that from your dad. So that, in short, is the end of my conversation. I wanted to keep it brief if there was any Q&A. So I'm handing it back to you, Madon. Okay. Anytime anyone has any questions, please just uh, go ahead and put that in the chat. And we'll be able to answer those questions for you, as many as uh, we get. Now, what I would like to say is that this is a great opportunity, either for physicians or pharmacies, to be able to access these type of products, okay? Uh, why are these products important? Well, let me uh, actually, uh, I forgot to share my screen here, but uh, there we go. So we have a, a place on our website called, you know, RS Connection that goes semi-glutide. It kind of everything that we just talked about is kind of like summarized in there. But what I would like to talk about is the kind of things that we can help your pharmacies do to Im increase the demand for these type of product. Okay, so for pharmacies located in Florida and Texas and 17 more states coming up just in the next uh, few weeks, uh, we have what's called Expedicare RX, which, you know, will have a uh, licensed physician in the state where the patient's located, and they can write any prescriptions for any kind of a compound. So if you're a compounder, and let's say you're making any kind of sildenafil, sublingual, or you, if you're making, you know, uh, semi-glutide trochees or anything else, we will pro you can use our Expedicare program in order for you to, you know, uh, write the prescription and our physician after consultation with the patient and reviewing the patient's chart and information, then he would write a prescription that would only come to your pharmacy. So that's a big deal because, you know, your prescription is not going to go where the patient wants to go. It's going to come to you because Expedicare, you're pre-purchasing tokens, and then you will give them these in a way, a text or email to your patients. They open that up. And they see the doctor and the prescription comes to you. Of course, we're giving you the medication. So that's also a big thing. As Mike explained, make sure you don't advertise yourself as, you know, generic for Ozempic. Make sure you don't say that this is uh, the equivalent. Uh, don't be using those kind of terminology. Just say it's semaglutide, uh, you know, five milligram per two ml. And it could be used for anything. And if you have, let's say, uh, doctors that are having a hard time, uh, you know, uh, prescribing Ozempic because uh, they can't, the patient can't get them, you can always call the office and ask them and tell them about the, what you have in stock. And if they like to, you know, prescribe the semaglutide the way we have it, that, that would be their option. Keep in mind that do not bill insurance companies for these things. And the reason we say this is that every time we, it has an NDC number and you're most likely going to get a rejected claim. He's rejected claim saying drug not covered, can't find NDC or something in that line. So what you're doing, you're, if you transmit a claim to a PBM, you actually will be putting yourself in danger of getting audited because if they see you know, five, 10 times a day or a week or whatever, they're getting these kind of claims from, you know, 15 other pharmacies, all of these will accumulate in their database. And they're going to, somebody sitting there with the clinical pharmacist looking at these, what are these products, semaglutide, where do they get it from? Are they compounders? What are they doing? So it's a great idea to just not even transmit those products to PBM. Just don't do it. Now, when it comes to marketing, okay, we give you everything you need in order for you to market. So not only we give you the doctor, not only we give you the medication, but we do all the marketing for you, okay? And that is the uh, uh, Rx Creator is uh, the program under our uh, Rx Connection umbrella. Well, you know, we uh, basically, as it says, we're not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, we will uh, put your posts, we can post things on your uh Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok. We give you a YouTube channel if you do a RX podcast with us. So we also create podcasts. A podcasting could be a great way for you to reach your audience. And uh, you can see examples of these uh, uh, pharmacies that are doing podcasts with us right on our homepage. Now, podcasting could be a powerful tool. Why? Because you know, if you do a weekly podcast and you can talk about not just semaglutide, just talk about all, all the other stuff, everything you do in your pharmacy. 
And when patients subscribe to your podcast, uh, they'll get notification every week. There's a new one. There's a new one. There's a new one. And then they get engaged. They listen to you. You are the expert. They listen to your advice. And maybe they'll call you and say, hey, I heard on your podcast something about semi-GLP-1. What is this about? And you can explain to them. You can get them signed up. And, you know, and uh, you have the doctors and you have the medication and you have all the marketing. So we put everything in not only on so, not any social media, but we can create podcast with this podcast we also will create these uh video shorts if you will and these are the ones you see often on tiktok or other social medias but it's just a five or ten second video that says oh uh i'm on i just lost 10 to 25 pounds or something like that and it gets a uh, audience's attention and then when you click on it it takes you to the site which will be your site your website your uh, page about talking about semi-glutide and then hopefully they will again click and they get engaged and you can call them and talk to them about your product, your services and everything else. Uh, I will, we were at the NCPA uh, uh, multi-location conference last week. Uh, we just got back on Sunday and I spoke to a pharmacy owner and I just could not believe how much they have done of the semaglutide. And I didn't, I didn't realize the extent of what they were doing, but but he told me that they do 300 of these per month. I mean, 300 semaglutide per month, uh, that's huge, you know? And when he told me everything that he does and we told him everything that we do, he actually, today he signed up on the podcasting thing and everything else because he sees how he can really uh, increase that number maybe from 300 to 500 you know easily in his town so uh, keep in mind we're here to support you we're here to help you uh, you know give you all the resources that uh, we've got and that's through engagement tools insight telehealth the supply chain and marketing and we have extensive knowledge about marketing and everything else. And if you ever want to uh, talk to us, just go to our homepage and schedule a call right in here. And also you can watch the video. We have a couple of nice videos that talks about all the services that we have and the semi-glutide things and marketing and things like that. And you can actually be looking at that. So um, Mike, do you see any uh, uh, questions? I don't see any questions. Okay. No, one question I up. Just, I can just say one thing um, you know, in terms of, of what's happening to other pharmacies. Um, it takes a while to get the actual true metrics, but we have them now. And that is an average on average, a pharmacy is moving uh, anything between 10 and 12 vials per week. So it gives you an idea that, you know, if you just take one box and you're looking at the numbers you're making, it's about it's about a profit margin for a pharmacy of about two thousand five hundred dollars a week. And given what's the norm and the trends out there. Uh, so, you know, it, it's very, very obvious that if you have a bigger pharmacy, you've got a lot of traction, you're doing your marketing and you're working with, uh, you know, your town and people know about it. They are going to come in and ask and um, to, you know, to be doing three to four thousand dollars profit a week. Uh, on your traffic that you have is not it's not it's not an unreasonable thought just wanted that to say that huge. yeah that's yes yeah. mike i got a question somebody asked me does these product get shipped refrigerated to my store so uh you, the answer to that is yes and no and uh, the why i say yes and no is the the one organization uh their product does not have to be shipped but if you want it we'll do it the other organization chooses to ship refrigerated so for the most part, we would say, yes, we'll just refrigerate and ship everything. Okay. Now, another question just popped up. I guess I'm not sure if it's the same person, but it's asking me, why doesn't this one has to be kept refrigerated? Uh, because when they did the BUD, the Beyond Use State, all the, the testing that was done on the product, uh, and remember, it's a pharmaceutical company, the testing has provided and given uh, the, the the ability for it not to have to be refrigerated for up to 15 days thereafter, they recommend refrigerate. Obviously, it is to be refrigerated once you use the product and, and you know, puncture the valve. Yeah. Uh, same person is asking, well, can we have this uh, shipped overnight? And Yes, you can. Yes. yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can have this. You can order them. 
And the way to do this is just go to buybuy.glp1rxdirect.com. So B-U-Y. And if you uh, need that link, uh, you can always call us and we can help you with that, that RX connection. But B-U-Y, buy.glp1rxdirect.com. And you just log in, you just create an account. This takes literally, you know, uh, two minutes. Just put in your MPI number and fill out all the uh, forms in here and just say submit. And then right away, you can log in. You can see the uh, products. You can add the quantity. And then you just uh, send your request. It's sent directly to the 503B facility. And then as soon as they get it, uh, they actually vet uh, your uh, uh office because you know they check and make sure you do have a valid state and dea license and then they get it out to you however you need uh one thing i would like to mention is that uh let's say for those stores that are doing their own marketing on our store tab okay we do have also a wealth of uh, uh marketing assets okay these includes flyers, brochures, social media pieces, posters, and you name it. And uh, I'll just show you the one, for example, semi-glutide. That's not all we have, but these are just examples of like posters that you can put on your window. We also have videos. We have social media posts. So we have a lot of stuff in here for you that you can, it's very easy to get these things. So basically, uh, if you go out to, for example, weight loss in the, flyer section you can see all these flyers eight and up by 11 basically add it to your cart if you're a member of uh, rx connection you get 20 percent off brings it down to 20 bucks and you just check out and we customize these for you you will get it in your mailbox within one hour also a social media piece we have a bunch of beautifully designed social media that if you want to do it yourself uh, you could do that so we have all kinds of things, whether it be weight loss, insulin, everything else. And the process is the same. I mean, as little as $5, we'll customize this uh, short video. For example, this one, as you can see, if you just click on it. And uh, again, you check out, you purchase, add to cart, purchase, and we'll create this customizer for your pharmacy and we'll send it to your mailbox and you can post it on your social media keep in mind we do post uh we do social media marketing so if you need social media assets to do it yourself or whether you need social media in order for you to uh for us to do it for you we can also do that as well these are all uh you know high quality contents that we provide you we customize it and everything else so make sure you visit our store Make sure you go on our website. You need more information about semi-glutide. How do I sign up? Well, you just go in here for your telemedicine. You can just get started in here. But to give, request your medication, it takes you to that uh, buy.glp1rx.com here. And marketing, it's all right in here. So uh, that's all I have uh, for everyone. I know, um, Mike, do you have anything else you would like to add? No, no, I just look forward to walk, working with anybody who wants to join and, uh, you know, increase a, a revenue stream in their office. And um, the other thing I do want to add is that the reason we've aligned ourselves with the people we've aligned ourselves with is, you know, we believe that if you give the best quality product to the market, you're not going to have any pullbacks, any real issues. And that's another thing for the safety of, of what we do and why we do the way we do. So, um, yeah, and if, if anybody needs anything on a personal basis, obviously they can call you and I'm available as well if they have any discussions they want to hold, uh, you know, on a personal basis of what how to, how to grow their business, business within their business. Right. Keep yeah, in mind, true. we've done the vetting for you. We've done the vet, vetting for you. So, basically, we've done all the homework. We've done... We've, uh, Across all the T's, we've looked at all the suppliers. We have selected suppliers that are meet our standards. And I'm a pharmacist, and I own several pharmacies, which uh, I sold uh, about five, six years ago. I don't own any, own any pharmacies at all. This is all I do is technology that revolves around pharmacy. And you can check that out on our connection. So if I don't see any other questions, uh, I think, Mike, this is uh, – uh, this is all we've got. So, okay. uh, we
we'll have these webinars again on a weekly basis for the next at least two weeks or so about the same time. And uh, you can always go to our website and uh, uh, register for the next one. We may be talking about different things for the next pod, uh, webinar. So just stay tuned. Okay. Uh, sure thing. <clears throat> is anybody can, uh, uh, is anybody from California? No, no we lost that. No, nobody. Yeah, we lost okay. a couple of people, but yeah, we've had people from California that's been asking, calling our office, and they say, "What about California?" Yeah. So at this point in time, uh, the exact law in California and what's happening is the only way we can get product into California, which we can, is if somebody actually provided us with a script and we had a script, we have an organization that can fill scripts anywhere in the United States. So from a, on that personal basis, the product can be sent directly to the patient's house. Right. Fantastic. But we are busy with a 503B now, which I believe June, it'll be ready for actual, you know, dis distribution in California. And, and it's in everyone, California. Just keep in mind, this is a fantastic opportunity for you. I know with the DIR fees and everything else that you guys face every day and made the uh, pharmacy business unprofitable. This is a great way for you to increase your revenue and, uh, you know, uh, you know, build some, uh, how about Michigan? So I just, one question, somebody said, how about Michigan? Uh, we, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to cover that uh, with the two labs. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Michigan is covered. Yep. So everyone, uh, if anyone, has any more questions otherwise uh we're going to end this uh uh thing and we're going to hope to see you again uh next week you can join us uh and uh we'll see everyone soon thank you mike for being with thank us you. And no, thank you thank you for having me thank All you right. mike. talk to you later Bye -bye.